Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today I'm going to start a uh, series. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it every day for the next uh, six uh, six uh, tying videos, or if I'm going to do it every second. But I'm going to do a series of uh, of uh, coronamid patterns or uh, uh, buzzer patterns. Okay. Uh, today I'm going to start off with one that I start using right at ice off, um, and that is a bloodworm pattern. Um, I really like using the blood worm right at ice off. Um, I use it throughout the year, but right at ice off, early season, I really like using them. Um, I'll show you a few different patterns. I'm only going to tie one, but I'll show you a few different patterns that I really like. And we'll go from there. So here we go. Switch over. So um, let's, let's go with, uh, so we've got this pattern here, right? Really simple, just a little, uh, a little, uh, blood worm with a little rib in it red rib and then it's got some uh gills uh then there's this one which is done with um the zemperfly microglint underbody really like this one i've done really well with this one again with and i do them without uh, the gills um and then you've got just some nice plain skinny little straight uh um blood worms as well. I mean, there's so many different patterns to coronamids and blood worms, but today what we're going to be tying is this one here. This one is probably one of my more effect, uh, uh, effective ones that I've done. Um, and uh, yeah, it works really well. Really simple pattern. Um, all it's going to use is the hook, Zemperfly Nano Silk in red, uh, the Hens Half Round Body Glass Micro in red, and uh, then a little bit of uh, floss for the gills. Um, now, the hook, that's up to you what you want to do. There's so many different pattern uh, hooks out there. I know this is the one that most people use is the TM, TMCO 200R. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of the TMCO 200R. I find they break too easy. Um, they bend too easy. Um, they just, I, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the gap in them either. Even this one here, this is the Mustad version of it, the uh, uh, C53S. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it either, but I, I like this shape. Um, I haven't found a another hook manufacturer that makes this gap a little bit bigger. I'd like to make the have that gap, this gap in here, the hook gap, a little bit bigger. Um, I'd feel more comfortable with that. Um, but it's the way it is. So, okay. So first things first, I waxed my red thread just a little bit. I'm just gonna start it right here at the at the head. It's okay if I've got a little bit because I'm using black wax so it's okay if I've got a little bit of a more of a blacker head that you'll see through here um, but that's okay because that's I do don't mind having a, a little bit of a darker head not black but darker so I'm just putting a base layer down all the way to the back here and then I'm just going to come back forward a bit again all the way forward and all the way back so just putting a nice touching base layer down so that red shines through and if this dark like I said if it covers up it's okay if it doesn't I'm not too worried about it because it uh, I don't mind having that uh, showing through a bit because if you look at a chronomid they're always a little darker up there anyway so so now <clears throat> the other thing I've also done sometimes is I put uh, um, some the Zemperfly uh, or a, a, um, braid flat braid underneath it or uh, a tinsel, a red tinsel. Uh, this time I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna use the red underbody. So here's my my uh, hen's uh, um, uh, body glass, half round body glass. And what I like doing with this is I'll see if I can do it on camera. I'll just get it soft and then I'll pull it out. And then see how that, that's got a really ragged kind of tie in point there. Just going to cut off some of that. All I'm doing is making a nice skinny tie-in point. See? Uh, if you want to see somebody that does this really well, go take a look at Mac Flies. He does it amazing. He's awesome at it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so now I just, I've just i caught it in. And I'm going to pull tight. And I'm going to go down just a little bit. Nice and tight. Come back up. And you see how that doesn't really build up much body? Because I've, I've pulled that nice and tight. And I... And that tie-in, that little tag is, uh, doesn't give much of a bump because it was nice and thin. 
So I'm going to come back to there. Let's make sure you guys are still focused because I knew I bumped it. Come back up, back down again one more time. I want to keep this fairly thin. I don't want too much buildup. Let's go back to the tie-in bump there. Back forward again, and that'll be it. I'm just going to stop right about there. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to give her a wrap, one right at the butt, and then open up and give my rib. Okay, all this is doing is just giving a bit of a segmentation look, right? And as I come forward, I'm, I'm letting go on that uh, body wrap, um, on the uh, half round body rib here. Uh, um, sorry, body glass is what Hens calls it. Um, I'm just letting go a bit to make that, as you can see, that the segment gets a little thicker as it comes up. So now I'm going to pull that tight, nip that off, just give it a few more wraps to make sure I've caught that down. I'm just going to build up just a little bit of a head section here. Not much, just a little bit of a football there. Okay, now I'm going to take my white floss here don't want a ton of it and I'm just gonna lay it on like that go one wrap make sure it stays up on top nice one wrap then I'm gonna turn it a little bit sometimes wetting this stuff helps bring that a bit forward there you go and same over here just gonna do one or two wraps and then I'm gonna cut it to length because it gets in the way as you can see so now I'm just gonna hold it up and I don't want it too long okay just a little hint of gills there just gonna stroke all that back just get a little bit in front stroke it all forward and I'm gonna a couple of wraps I'm gonna figure eight a couple more wraps there done okay hold that all forward and I like finishing these off behind the gills and there's a reason for that because I'm going to be putting I'm going to be coating these right and I want to have that coating coating the uh, whip finish so just make sure you don't catch any of the, the gills in nice and tight that nano silk you can I could bend this hook quite easily with this nano silk Okay, so there is the finished fly. Okay. But now I'm going to just make sure this all holds, gets held forward. And I'm going to use this uh, Zemperfly No Tack Resin. Really like this stuff, actually. I've been, uh, I've only used it for uh, well, maybe a couple of weeks now, a week and a half, but uh, it's, it's really thick. Um, so you don't need to use very much. Um, but it it, uh, it 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 does a very nice job. It uh, I find that it does it is a no tack. It actually is a no tack. Not a lot of them. They say they are, but not a lot of them actually are. Um, yeah. So I'm just doing a really light coating on here, right up to those that whip finish that I did, right in behind the gills. Just a real thin coat. If you get anything trapped in there, like right there. You can always pick it out. Where's my little slider? See if I can get that out of there. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, especially when you're half blind like I am. It's a little more difficult, but let's see if I can. Ah, there we go. Got it out. So again, just make sure that's nicely spread. I don't want much of a coating on that. So, okay, then I'm going to take my little handy dandy UV light, cure that. Give it a nice cure. And this fly is pretty well done. I'm going to do one more coating of uh, with Sally Hansen's. I, and I do that with any UV product I use. It doesn't matter what it is. 
whether it's the uh, Zemperfly one, whether it's the Solar Res, whether it's the uh, Golf. I always use a little bit of Sally Hansen's on here. Just another additional layer of protection, plus uh, I think it just gives that little bit extra sheen to it, which I really want in these. So, okay. Just spread that a little bit if it's too thick. There we go. So that's the finished fly. Um, it's, yeah, it's simple. Um, I like fishing these near the bottom in the spring, like right after ice off. I like them right near the bottom. Um, whether you want to do that via a sinking method with a sinking fl um, fly line, whether you want to do that with uh, just a countdown method on a dry line, uh, and you can have two or three flies on a on a on a setup, um, it depends on where you are. If you're like in B, in excuse me, in BC, all of a sudden they got the hiccups. If you're in BC, um, where you can only use one fly under an indicator, works really well, obviously. And then yeah, just right, right, uh, right tight to the ground, like within a foot of the ground. I like having it. So, alrighty, and dead still, just leave it alone. Maybe give it the odd, slow little figure eight. That's it. Um, yeah, and then as the day progresses, I like uh, changing up the color. I like going a little bit uh, darker, like I'll go to the blacks and I'll go to the dark greens and stuff, and depending on where I am in the water column as well. So, Alrighty, well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. I'm getting close. Uh, another 70, I think it is, or something like that, uh, uh, subscriptions. We'll be giving away a copy of the books I wrote, as well as a bunch of the flies I've tied on this channel. So, uh, yeah, spread the word. Let's uh, get this up to 1,000, and then uh, we'll go for 2,000, and I'll have a bunch of fly tying materials and stuff like that when I hit 2,000 members. So, um, yeah, tie lines, and uh, keep an eye out for the rest of my coronamid series. Like I said, I'll be doing uh, a couple of, probably a couple of bloodworms, and then I'll be doing a couple of uh, black ones, a couple of green ones, a couple of buzzer style. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. So, tie lines, everyone.